join us at Women of Courage and celebrate the achievements of women. has been designated as Women's History Month. When we discuss the achievements of women, I have decided to celebrate the lives of 50 to 60 black women. We're going to discuss the black women who were murdered by police officers. We are going to discuss the lives of women who stood shoulder to shoulder in the fight for civil rights. There were more than just Coretta Scott King and Rosa Parks black women fighting the war for civil rights. Rosa Parks and Coretta Scott King came late to the fight. There were many, many other women who have been lost to history. Rosa Parks and Coretta Scott King happened to, to, be, to be two black women that white people want to celebrate. But there were women who were back in the 1800s that were fighting for civil rights, and they should be also remembered. There were women in New York who were fighting for civil rights. There were black female soldiers that fought during the Civil War. There were a whole host of black women who have contributed to our lives. Then we are going to turn our attention to four other women who made significant contributions to our way of life. So the next six weeks are going to be a history lesson. Someone on Facebook said that black children are not being taught their history in schools. They may be right, and they probably are, but it is the parents' responsibility to make certain that their children learn their history. All black parents have to do is go purchase books written by black men and women and make certain that their children read these books. All black parents have to do is purchase the books and tell their children that they are to sit down and spend their time reading instead of playing video games. They are to make certain that they have plenty of books in the house. They can read a newspaper online about African study articles. The parent can download these articles and print the articles out and give them to the children to read. What you are doing is fostering reading in your child, and you are teaching your child that reading is important. Also, parents need to read in front of their children. They need to set an example about reading. What a child learns does not have to be controlled by the local school board. Your child can be successfully taught their history at home or in church if the pastor decides black history is important. There is nothing taught in school that cannot be taught at home. As a parent, your responsibilities are to provide protection to your child, teach your child to read, and how to take care of himself. This is a full-time job, meaning you do not have time to commit adultery. There is lots of information online about reading. This information can be applied to yourself. If you have difficulty reading, or you do not like to read, or you cannot read, you should review this information, and you also should seek help. Regardless to what your attitude is about reading, you might as well accept the fact that you need to learn to read competently, and your children need to know their own history. When a man reads, he begins to believe he has a future. This is extremely important for black males because most black males are taught that they do not have a future. I am going to pause for a second to take a short break while you listen to information regarding willpower and encouragement. It is all a matter of learning new behaviors. And please remember, it is easier to build strong minds than to repair injured people. What I said is a modification of a quote by Frederick Douglass. 
He said it is easier to build strong children than to repair broken men. Now for my break. Reading is not only a necessity of life, it is an activity that can be fun. Why not visit the website touchedbythelight.us and learn more about the books that we have discussed during our programs. Books such as A Christian is Never Desperate, What You Must Do to Win, Life-Saving Advice, Women of Courage Part 1 and 2, You Are the Prophet of Your Life, and the book Murdered Voices. We think you will be glad that you took the time out of your day to visit our website, touchedbythelight.us. Have a great day. Dear listeners, help us save the life. Stop breast cancer from taking lives. Will you assist us in putting the booklet, Black Women and Breast Cancer, in the hands of a million people? Please go to the website, www.touched by the light.us and download the booklet black women and breast cancer then email this booklet to five friends asking them to email the booklet to five of their friends we are trying to reach a million women with this information to save lives the death of one woman to breast cancer from our community is one woman too many we thank you for your support today we are going to discuss a woman who is not only has not been remembered she her name is not even recognized she has never been given the accolades that other black women have been given who have fought for the civil rights of our black people the woman's name is elizabeth jennings graham she is responsible for the desegregation of the new york transit authority I think she is just as important or more important than Rosa Parks. Ms. Parks boarded a bus where blacks were allowed to ride in the back of the bus. Elizabeth Jennings boarded a trolley where blacks were not even allowed to ride. Rosa Parks defied the public transportation system December 1st, 1955. I was 10 years old at the time. When Miss Jennings defied the Public Transportation Authority, July 16, 1954, I was not alive. That was 101 years before Rosa Parks made her protest. Think about that for a moment. 101 years before Rosa Parks refused to give a white man her seat on the public bus in Birmingham, Elizabeth Jennings Graham was forcibly thrown off of a trolley in Manhattan, New York by the conductor because he, black people, at that time they were called Negroes, were not allowed to ride the trolley. She was injured during the struggle. Ms. Jennings was a school te teacher, so she was educated. She also came from a well-to-do family. She felt that the policy was wrong, so she took the Transportation Authority to court. She won her case in 1955. The Brooklyn Circuit Court ruled that African Americans could not be excluded from transit authorities. Her case went to court and was publicized by Frederick Douglass. Chester Arthur was Jennings lawyer. He had only been admitted to the bar a couple of months before Miss Jennings was pushed off the streetcar. But he made use of a recently enacted state law making common carriers liable for the acts of their agents and employees. And he won the case. Chester Arthur would later become the 21st United States President in, 19, excuse me, in 1881 after President James Garfield was assassinated. Elizabeth Jennings Graham spent her life as a school teacher promoting the education of black children. This was an extraordinary effort in that time. 
because in New York, this was a turn of the 20th century, only six out of 10 school age children were enrolled in the schools in New York. When the New York State Legislature passed the Civil Rights Act of 1873, the, that racial discrimination of public transportation was finally outlawed in New York City. We know of her fight with the New York Transit Authority is because Frederick Douglass publicized her plight. Now think about this. All of this happened because Elizabeth Jennings was an organist at the First Colored Congregation Church on 6th and 2nd Avenue. She was running late for church. So she was standing outside waiting for the bus for colored people. And that bus was late. Some buses bore the sign that says, Colored Persons Allowed. While most of the buses had the sign that says, No colored people are allowed. For, in other words, for blacks to get around in New York, they had to pay a fare to board a large horse-drawn carriage. Well, Miss Elizabeth Jennings was late that day, and she wanted to get to church on time. So she boarded a bus that did not have the sign, Colored People Allowed. The conductor told her to get off the bus, and, he, and she wouldn't do it. He told her that the bus was full, and she said, no, the bus is not full. He pretended that the other passengers did not want her on the bus. But when she insisted on riding the bus, he took her by force and pushed her and shoved her off the bus. The fact that he pushed her was the law that her lawyer was going to use in court. Miss Jennings was not only educated, she came from a good family. Her father was an important businessman in the community, and he has ties with the two major black churches in the city. Since they were not satisfied after they had a massive rally that took place following her day of being shoved off the bus, Elizabeth Jenny went and hired a law firm, Culvert, Parker, and Arthur, and took the Third Avenue Railroad Company, Railway Company, to court. Now, you notice the name in the firm. It was Culver, Parker, and Arthur. Her attorney was Chester Arthur. He was 24 years old. He had just passed the bar. This company did not mind representing blacks. The trial took place in Brooklyn. This is where the bus company originated. Judge William Rockwell of the Brooklyn Circuit Court ruled that the black school teacher won the case. By 1860, all of the city's streets and rail cars were desegregated. This meant that black people in New York could take whatever bus arrived at their bus stop. They would no longer have to stand in the rain and in the snow and the sleet and the hail waiting for a bus that was labor, excuse me, labeled colored people. There are some more articles about Miss Elizabeth Jennings. The articles are entitled, The School Teacher on the Streetcar, Narrative Network, Elizabeth Jennings in Early African New York, Columbia University, BlackPath.org, Stuff You Missed in History Class, Transportation Protest, 1841 to 1992. These are some very good articles to read. They will add to your arsenal of information to give to your children. I am going to pause for a second to take a short break while you listen to information regarding willpower and encouragement. It is all a matter of learning new behaviors. And please remember, it is easier to build strong minds than to repair injured people. What I said is a modification of a quote by Frederick Douglass. He said, it is easier to build strong children than to repair broken men. Now for my break. Become a sponsor of the Women of Courage show by inviting 10 women 
for a pleasant afternoon to listen to us speak at your venue. Help us change our community to one of peace and harmony. The Women of Courage show is supported by the Women and Children's Restoration Ministries to help women problem solve and to help women realize their dreams. Women should believe that anything is possible. Our sole purpose is the restoration of injured women, both physically and mentally. We meet twice a month on Saturday at a local restaurant to discuss subjects germane to women. We see five main problems of black women that we must solve ourselves. One is the sexual abuse of children, bringing unrelated males into the home and fail to notice changes in behavior, rape and murder of black women, failure to learn the warning signs, breast cancer, which is a failure to be examined, sex trafficking of black women, accepting prostitution as a way of life, economic trials of black women due to the inability to read or lack of education. Learn how to sponsor the Women of Courage show by speaking to our spokesperson, Renee of WHPR. She can be reached at Renee88.1FM at gmail.com. I repeat, Renee 88.1 FM at gmail.com. She will tell you all about it, or you can leave a message at the number 734-686-1444. Thank you. This right here, this is the moment right before the day starts when you get to look in the mirror and tell yourself who you are. Now you've been through some dark days, I believe that. But all that pain and struggle, that made the person you're looking at now. So when you walk out of these doors today, I need you to believe in yourself. I need you to believe you are the strongest person walking this planet. They don't know what you've been through. They don't know the grind it took for you to be here. So when you leave here today, I need you to show them. What we need to focus on now is bringing positive energy into the world. The energy that we project every day is the same energy that we get back. We've all seen those people that can walk into a room and they glow. People wanna be around them. People feel better being in their presence. That's the energy that we need to create. And once we learn how to do this, our life will be filled with greatness. We will attract that positive energy. And how we do this is by changing our outlook, leading every day with gratitude, thankfulness, optimism. And once you do this, you will see the change. I want you to take a moment and close your eyes. Think about everything positive in your life. Family, friends, a career, your faith. All of this is how you start your day. Every morning you wake up, I want you to think about what is positive 
in your life. I want you to list 10 reasons of why your life is amazing. And once you do this, you will see the change. You will be the change. You will begin to attract life's blessings. Lead with gratitude. Be thankful and think positive. On August 28, 1963, over 250,000 men, women, and children of various classes, backgrounds, religious beliefs, journeyed to Washington, D.C. to march for civil rights. The goal of the march included a push for a comprehensive civil rights bill ending segregation in schools, protecting voting rights, and protecting employment discrimination. This is the time when Martin Luther King made his famous speech, I Have a Dream. Well, here is some background. While the march advocated equality for African Americans in American society, the march was not progressive for gender equality and was dominated by men. The formal program initially excluded any prominent women of the civil rights movement. From speaking at the march, Anna Arnold Hedgeman, the sole woman of the administrative committee of the march, protested the lack of women. Philip Randolph, the march organizer and the male leadership which included the big six, decided that they would allow women to speak as if they had a right to tell us when and how we were to conduct ourselves. They gave women an acknowledgement by making the tribute to Negro fighter for freedom. But the greatest insult was women were not included in the delegation that met with President Kennedy later that afternoon. We were excluded. The March on Washington highlighted the sexism toward the marginalization of women within the civil rights movement. What is not discussed in history is that when Rosa Parks was arrested, she was supported by women. She had ties to women in three other states. The males became involved and took over the movement because they did not want women out front. But women have been out front for a long time. Although there were plenty of articulate women around, black men felt it was their duty to speak for the race and exclude the voices of black women. You see, black men are just as sexist as white men. People need to know that thousands of black women were fighting for civil rights long before Martin Luther King. Women were the backbone of the civil rights movement from small towns to the national movement. Women played a crucial role as strategists and advocates. They participated despite the danger including violence, homelessness, unemployment, sexual assault, and death. I am sick and tired of the marginalization of women, especially black women. We have stood up Time and time again for civil rights, we were even raped for opening our mouths and hanged for opening our mouths. Exploring the civil rights movement beyond its familiar narrative will highlight the conflicts, the compromises, and the complexities that allow for a greater understanding of the civil rights movement. This exploration will rightly acknowledge the contribution of many women whose blood, sweat, tears, and dedication helped the civil rights movement. Now I'm going to read the names of 17 women and give you a brief history of their contribution to winning civil rights for blacks. The women are Subsima Poseta Clark, I'm not pronouncing it correctly, Diane Nash, Fannie Lou Hamer, Dorothy Height, Ella Baker, Angela Davis, 
Daisy Bates, McCree Harris, Shirley Sherrod, Johnny Carr, Georgia Gilmore, Ruby Davis, Joanne Robinson, Gwendolyn Simmons, Ruby Bridge, Claudette Colvin, and Josephine Baker. That's right, Josephine Baker was more than just an entertainer. He was also a spy. Only six of these women are still alive. They are Diane Nash, Angela Davis, Shirley Sherrod, Gwendolyn Simmons, Ruby Bridge, and Claudette Colvin. The oldest of these women that are still alive is 81 years old. September Clark was an educator from South Carolina who developed the citizenship school at the Highland Folk School and later through the Southern Christian Leadership Conference. The Citizenship School taught and encouraged African Americans to learn and harness the power of literacy, education, and civics to gain their civil rights and empower their community. Septima Clark was born in 1898. She died in 1987. Diane Nash, while attending the Fisk University in 1959, involved herself in the civil rights movement in Nashville, Tennessee. By 1960, she was one of the most well-known and respected students, leaders in the city. She was crucial to organizing the Nashville sit-ins. She also helped sustain the freedom rides through the Deep South. Nash was a leader for the Student Nonviolence Coordinating Committee. She was educated at Fisk and Howard Universities. She was born in 1938. She is now 81 years old. Fanny Lou Hamer, she's my favorite. She was born in 1917. She died at the age of 60 in 1977. Please read her history and find out what a doctor did to her. Fannie Lou Hamer fought for civil rights in rural Mississippi. Yes, Mississippi. Actively challenging the racist status quo by pushing for desegregation and trying to get African Americans to register to vote. She was one of the leaders of the 1964 Freedom Summer Campaign. I was in Mississippi at this time which battled white supremacy, segregation, and racial violence in Mississippi. She also co-founded the Mississippi Freedom Democratic Party to integrate African Americans into the state's Democratic Party. The next woman is Dorothy Hyatt. She was born in 1912. She died recently in 2010. Dorothy Hyatt was known as the godmother of the civil rights movement because her extensive involvement in the fight for civil rights since 1930s. Early in her active career, Ms. Height met Mary McLeod Bethune at a New York YMCA and became her protege. Ms. Height would come to help organize events during the civil rights movement, such as the 1963 March on Washington. She influenced leaders like Martin Luther King Jr. and John Lewis. She was a pioneer in the use of political organization and strongly advocated for women's rights in the United States and worldwide. Ella Baker was born in 1903 or 1886. They're not certain. She died April 1960. Ella Baker was essential in organizing the founding con conference of the Student Nonviolence Coordinating Committee at Shaw University in Raleigh, North Carolina. She persuaded Martin Luther King to invest in the conference, which was called SNCC. SNCC was used to help cultivate the energy of young people around the nation who wanted to help in the civil rights movement. Angela Davis, she was born in 1944. She is still alive. In 1963, Ms. Davis joined the Civil Rights Movement after the bombing of the 16th Street Baptist Church that killed those four children, young girls. 
Davis became better known for her participation in the Black Power Movement, the Black Par Panther Party, and the American Communist Party in California. Davis Bates was born in 1914. She died in 1999. Davis Bates was active in the civil rights movement in Arkansas. She and her husband published a weekly paper that advocated for African Americans to receive civil rights. The Arkansas Press is the paper that they published. She was instrumental in desegregating schools in the state immediately after the Brown versus Board of Education decision in 1954. Mentored, supported, and organized the Nine Children, also known as the Little Rock Nine, selected to integrate Little Rock Central High School in 1957. As you can see, these women took on some very tough tasks, and they won. McCree Harris was born in 1934. She died in 2000. Miss McCree Harris was part of the Civil Rights Movement in Albany, Georgia. As an educator, at Monroe Comprehensive High School, she urged young people to get involved in the Civil Rights Movement. She was also a part of the Freedom Singers. The Freedom Singers used money, excuse me, used music to raise money for the Student Nonviolence Coordinating Committee and to educate about events during the Civil Rights Movement. Shirley Sherrod was born in 1948. She is still alive. Ms. Sherrod became active in the Civil Rights Movement after her father was shot to death by a white farmer in 1965. She was an organizer for the SNCC, the Southwest Georgia Project, along with her husband, Charles Sherrod. Through the Southwest Georgia Project, she strongly advocated for African American land ownership and land retention. I am going to pause for a second to take a short break while you listen to information regarding willpower and encouragement. It is all a matter of learning new behaviors. And please remember, it is easier to build strong minds than to repair injured people. What I said is a modification of a quote by Frederick Douglass. He said, it is easier to build strong children than to repair broken men. Now for my break. I think one thing we can all agree on is how important it is to find time in your life to grow. With your personal development, your hobbies, with your profession, to step outside of your routine to explore. We cannot grow. We cannot expect change unless we are willing to try something new. And that's what I want you to focus on right now. Are you willing to step outside of your comfort zone are you willing to try something new regardless of the outcome? Because even when you try and you might not succeed, you still grow from the experience. That's what life is about. Being comfortable even when you're not comfortable. And I promise you, once you start to take those chances, you will begin to attract new opportunities into your life. But trust me, this step is never easy. But what you need to focus on is the end result. Are you content with staying the same or are you looking for growth? Are you looking for change? Are you looking for opportunity? If you are, this is how you do it. You need to grow.
having a goal or a plan to accomplish something isn't enough. You need to dig deeper than that. You need to tap into your subconscious to begin to reprogram your mind. And you do this through positive affirmations. Short statements that you repeat every day, regardless of your goal, how big or little. Whether your goal is to make more money, be a better boyfriend or girlfriend, or find a better job, whatever your goal is, you need to come up with short positive statements about that goal and repeat it each morning. Start by doing this for five minutes. And once you begin to do this, you will start to see how the subconscious and conscious mind can work together. You have the potential to do amazing things. And through positive affirmations, you start to build that confidence. Think of all the goals that you've made in the past. Think about the mindset you were in at that moment. It was one of confidence and control. I will be successful in my job. I will make my next promotion. I will meet the love of my life. These are words of affirmation. Now tell me, what are your words? Johnny Carr was born in 1911. She died in 2008. Johnny Carr was politically active in Montgomery, Alabama. In 1931, she helped to raise money for the nine young African American men who were wrongly accused in the Scottsboro trial. Later, through working for the NAAC chapter, she became involved with the Montgomery bus boycott. Carr was instrumental in working behind the scenes to organize the 13-month boycott. In 1964, she and her husband filed a suit against the Montgomery County Board of Education for their sons to attend the all-white Sydney High School. They won their case in 1969. Thelma Glass was born in 1916. She died in 2012. Thelma Glass was a geography professor at the Alabama State University. She was part of the Women's Political Council in Montgomery, Alabama. The council was critical in organizing the Montgomery bus boycott. Do you see now? That Montgomery bus boycott was not, I repeat, not organized solely by men. Women helped. Georgia Gilmore was born in 1920. She died in 1990. Georgia Gilmore used her talents in cooking as a restaurateur to help support the movement in Montgomery, Alabama. She participated in the Montgomery bus boycott and was fired from her job because of her participation. She opened up a restaurant in her home, which became a safe space for civil rights leaders. Also, she formed the club from nowhere, which consisted of African-American women cooking and selling cakes and pies to black and white customers. The money went to support the effort in the bus boycott. As you know, cooking is hard work. Ruby D was born in 1922. Ruby D was a film and Broadway actress who along with her husband, Ozzie Davis, were both active in supporting the civil rights movement through the arts. She and her husband challenged the negative stereotypes and the subservient roles of African Americans on Broadway and in films. Ruby D and her husband took non-traditional lead roles for African Americans and wrote positive portrayals of African Americans in their works. She starred in 
Lorraine Hansberry, Raisin in the Sun, in 1959. She also helped found the Association of Artists for Freedom in 1963. Joanne Robinson was born in 1912. She died in 1992. Joanne Robinson was a teacher in Montgomery, Alabama. She became involved with the Civil Rights Movement after being verbally attacked by a white bus driver in 1949. Under her leadership, the Women's Political Council focused their efforts on organizing and supporting the Montgomery Bus Boycott. She also helped to organize the Montgomery Improvement Association, a grassroots organization that fought for civil rights and bus desegregation. It was the first black civil rights organization to operate outside of the NAACP. Gwendolyn Simmons was born in 1944. She is still alive. As a student at Spelman College in Atlanta, Georgia, Miss Simmons became active in the Student Nonviolent Registration Committee, despite the warnings from her parents and the college. She participated in the Freedom Summer of 1964 by building schools in Mississippi. She was in Mississippi when those civil rights workers were killed. During the 1960s, she worked in Mississippi, Georgia, and Alabama to get African Americans registered to vote. Ruby Bridge was born in 1954. As a six-year-old, Ruby Bridge was the first African American child to integrate schools in Louisiana. On her first day at school, she and her mother escorted by U.S. Marshals, endured the taunts and threats as she approached the Johnson Lockett Elementary School in New Orleans. Only one white teacher was willing to teach Ruby, and she was the only child in the kindergarten class due to racism. Ruby was unable to eat lunch in the cafeteria or go to recess alone because of the danger of violence toward her. Ruby Bridge never missed a day at school. Claudette Colvin was born in 1935. She is still alive. Nine months before Rosa Parks, Claudette Colvin resisted giving her seat to a white passenger just because the bus in Montgomery was crowded. She was 15 years old. Her actions were the inspiration for the planned protests conducted by Rosa Parks later that year. Claudette Colvin's testimony in the trial Gail v. Browder in 1959, which is about the segregation of Montgomery buses, helped to end the transportation segregation in that state. That's right. The actions of a 15-year-old was the inspiration for Rosa Parks refusing to give her seat up in a Montgomery bus. Claudette Colvin was not tired. She just did not think it was right for a white man to take her seat after she paid for the bus ticket. The last woman we are going to speak of is Josephine Baker. Miss Baker was born in 1906, and she died in 1975. Josephine Baker was a famous film and Broadway actress in the 1920s. In 1925, she continued her success on the stage when she moved to France. Miss Baker became a resistance fighter in France during the Second World War between 1939 and 1945. After the war, she continued to live and travel and perform between Europe and the United States. Miss Baker refused to perform in front of a segregated crowd or where she was refused hospitality. She worked with the NAACP during the Civil Rights Movement. She was the only female speaker at the march in Washington, D.C. in 1963. All of these women were avid readers, and many of them were authors. I am going to pause for a second 
to take a short break while you listen to information regarding willpower and encouragement. It is all a matter of learning new behaviors. And please remember, it is easier to build strong minds than to repair injured people. What I said is a modification of a quote by Frederick Douglass. He said, it is easier to build strong children than to repair broken men. Now for my break. Reading is not only a necessity of life, it is an activity that can be fun. Why not visit the website touchedbythelight.us and learn more about the books that we have discussed during our programs. Books such as A Christian is Never Desperate, What You Must Do to Win, Life-Saving Advice, Women of Courage Part 1 and 2, You Are the Prophet of Your Life, and the book Murdered Voices. We think you will be glad that you took the time out of your day to visit our website, touchedbythelight.us. Have a great day. Will you help us? Our prison ministry is trying to reach women with sons and or brothers in prison. We would like for these women to help us with our ministry and halt the growing population of incarcerated men. If you know of someone with a loved one in prison, please contact us at 734-686-1444 or email us at murderedvoices at gmail.com. We must teach men to read to keep them from entering prison or before they leave prison. Men are now entering prison for killing their children. This has to stop. If we can reduce these murders by teaching men to read, to think clearly, and to manage their emotions. Edward You're watching Detroit's own WHPR-TV, Detroit Live. This is Renee stepping out on faith. You can watch me 24 hours a day, seven days a week on the WHPR TV Now app. Download our free app at WHPR TV Now. Weekdays at 2 p.m. Eastern. Remember, if you miss one of our shows, you can visit our YouTube channel at Touched by the Light Publishing to watch and listen to previous episodes a women of courage. Thank you. You can visit touchedbythelight.us and learn what our books have to offer to you. Did you notice the difference in the women we just discussed? The women were of all backgrounds. Some of the women were teachers, some were students, some were performers, some were authors, some were actresses. All of these women were motivated to do something to change the lives of black people. These women worked tirelessly to help. They put their lives on the line, they put their careers on the line, and they put their livelihood on the line. Some of the women were fired for their participation in the civil rights movement. This was not an easy time. Violence was right around the corner for some of these women, especially those that participated in the sit-ins and marches being conducted in the areas. <clears throat> Excuse me. Equal participation in society became the focus of the civil rights movement. The question became, if I am a citizen, then why can't I participate in life just like other citizens in this country? Why can't I go to the universities just like other people in this country? Why can't I purchase a house? Why can't I purchase a car just like other people in this country? Much of the fundraising that took place to house people, to transport people, was done by women. Women worked tirelessly walking long distances to purchase food. Then they had to bring the food back. Then they had to stand in the kitchen and cook food for large numbers of people. Then they had to house these people. 
And most of the time when they housed these people, they did not know who they were. They cared for these people as if they were hotel guests. Now, compare your life to the lives of these women. What have you done to contribute to your community other than going to church and saying you're a Christian? When we started broadcasting our show, Women of Courage, we said that our primary goal was to change the lives of children. We want children to learn to read and we want our children to seek new and different careers for the future. We wanted to save the children, yet we knew in order to do this, we would have to influence the thoughts of their parents. We would have to get women to take a long look at the way that they were conducting their lives and to make changes to themselves and their home since women are the primary caregivers. Sit down and take a long conversation with yourself. Ask yourself, what am I doing with my life? Is there not anything I can do to change the situation that I am in? How effective am I as a parent? Can I do better? Can I change my standard of living? What do I need to do to make these changes in my life? What are the bad habits that I am clinging to that are keeping me from realizing my dream? Am I properly preparing my children to take on the world? How often do you visit the bar? How often are you so concerned about the size of your breasts and the size of your buttocks that you can't do anything else? How often are you worried about what somebody else is doing? How often do you sit and gossip about other women? Seriously, you need to take a good look at yourself because all the changes must start with self. If you, if you know you do not feel good about yourself, then you need to seek professional help. One sign that you do not feel good about yourself is the condition of your home, the condition of your car, your use of drugs, your smoking marijuana before you go to work. Those are signs that you do not love yourself. You can also look at the condition of your children. If you are committing adultery, or if you're trying to entice your best girlfriend's husband, or if you're gossiping at work, then you need to seek professional help. If you are having problems with your children, you need to seek help now. You do not need to wait until your child runs away from home to try to solve the problem. Then it's too late. We know it is hard to change, but think of the consequences that will take place in your life if you do not change. Stand to lose the lives of your children. You say you love your children, then act like it. Stand up and go seek professional help. If your finance is awful, if you are not working, if you're constantly on the phone talking to your best girlfriend, trying to hide your bad feeling, if you're always feeling depressed, then you need professional help. Go get it. A lot of times you could just be confused and you need someone to help you get your life in order, at least to give you some direction. You may need to learn how to think, not what to think, but how to think, how to process information correctly. Losing your children to drugs and prostitution in prison is truly a burden too great to bear. If you do not know how to manage your life, then you need to find someone that's professional to help you straighten out your life. Consider change. Take baby steps if necessary, but at least take the first step. You should take the step of trying to gather new information into your life. And you do this by reading. The Women of Courage show broadcasts every Friday from 3 to 4 p.m. and every Sunday from 8 to 9 a.m. Please remember, if you are not in your car or near radio during our broadcast, we can be seen and heard on your computer if you go to TV33 whpr.com again tv33 whpr.com we can also be heard on your phone if you download the free app whpr tv detroit live or listen to us on roku at whpr tv detroit live 88.1 fm if you miss 
one of our broadcasts. You can view our archive on YouTube at the Touch by the Light publishing channel. Twice a month on Saturday, I meet with my listeners for a discussion about issues affecting women. Please join us. For dates, times, and directions, you can reach us at murderedvoices at gmail.com. Stop thinking there is nothing you can do to change the world. Your life is important. You need to come out and join us and give a voice to our concerns. For more information on our subjects or our books, you can email us at murderedvoices at gmail.com. We enjoy your listening to the Women of Courage show at WHPR every Friday from 3 to 4 p.m. and every Sunday from 8 to 9 a.m. And thank you for listening to Women of Courage and have a great day. Thank you.